Battle Brothers. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words. Battle Brothers is a turn-based tactical RPG which has you leading a mercenary company in a gritty, low-power, medieval fantasy world. You decide where to go, whom to hire or to fight, and what contracts to take, and how to train and equip your men in a procedurally generated open-world campaign. So what is Battle Brothers then? Well, I've just f***ing told you, weren't you listening? Battle Brothers is a game where you lock the door of your room when you sit down at one's PC, you must have a big jar of sweets, an enormous barrel of drink, your favourite tipple, a comfy chair, and about a year off life. You see guys, this game is deep. It's great to play, it's so kind of, who cares about anything else? You know, let's just play, play Battle Brothers. You just sink into your chair, you're not rushed. You know, a Tesco order came in the middle of a battle, I didn't give a shit. I just simply took off my headphones, walked down the stairs and says, Geef Groceries Bitch. And I came back up to the game and it was still going. It was still going exactly where I'd left it because it's turn-based. I love real-time games as well, but there's something about turn-based when you're in that kind of mood where you don't want to... For example, my partner was sitting, she was playing a survival game when Tesco's arrived. She was... <laughs> Escape. Save, save. I'll see you downstairs. You know, that's anyway. Uh, what you do in Battle Brothers is this: you start off with three little shitheads, basically, and these little shitheads are the mates, the decent mates. You know, they've all got a background, uh, as you would expect in an RPG. They've got rudimentary weapons, a bit of shitty cloth on their face as armor, and they have to go around and earn money. Now, you do that by two means in this game: you trade and you do contracts. Now, contracts are missions, essentially. But you have to be careful what missions you take, because if you take a big mission that you're not equipped for, you're all gonna die horribly, and it's permadeath. So, early on in the game, you wanna be picking easy missions. The, the, the missions are represented by a skull. Uh, one skull is easy, two skulls, three skulls, four skulls, etc. Now, once you've got a bit of money, you then go to a town and you start hiring new new people the town will have all kinds of things it'll also it'll have a, a form of income it might be a mine it might be um skinning or whatever and whatever it its source of income is it will sell that good reasonably cheap so you can sort of buy gems at it where there's a gem mine and sell them where there isn't a gem mine and make a little bit of money also you get favor with the town if you start doing uh, quests for that town like contracts uh, they like you and then they'll lower their prices. But oh, it's Mac, it's Mac and his band of arse faces. We'll just lower the prices. There you go, Mac, there you go. Have some fur for, for like half price. And then you go and sell it um, for full price somewhere else. And and that's how, that's the basics. That's the very bare bones basics of the game. So as you get going and you get more and more men uh, rallying to your cause, you then start taking more complex missions that have uh, bigger rewards, but also bigger danger. And the good thing about this game is every single guy in this game has a background. You know, you get someone like Olag McMurphy II, who's only got one hand and a club foot, but he's, you know, he only costs threepence halfpenny a day, you know, to, to keep in your in your group. And you know, you can you can hold a sword in one hand and a shield in his teeth or something. And you know, you get you can get cheap cheap people like that or you can get somebody you know who's in full plate armor with a sword and a shield and maybe level three or four because this is the thing guys as your men fight they also level up they also get perks each individual guy not only levels up his stats and gives you points to spend in his stats but like i say they get perks it's a full perk tree guys it's insane the level of detail for each guy that you have and you can have quite a few guys in your little band of brothers Another thing you have to also do is you have to gear everybody up because gear is very, very important in this. You have spears, swords, clubs, bows, uh, crossbows, all kinds of stuff really. Different types of every one of them as well um, that, that all have different stats and some have different procs that happen. Um, some will lower certain uh, stats that you have, some will increase certain stats that you have. So you have to sit and think, this is where the, the jar of sweets and your tipple comes in because you you know, you know don't want to be rushing this, you want to be looking at each individual person and you want to be gearing them all out with what swords and shields or spears is going to do well for them and uh, 
making sure that they have uh, stuff in their bags as well you know you can put bandages in the bags you can put spare shields in in case a shield breaks in combat you've got to really take your time you also have to think about formations as well for example uh, you can set your men out in, in a formation that every time they go into battle that is the formation that they will all form and it's very important what i learned and it's probably still not right is i've got a, a wall of spearmen at the front and I, I form a spear wall that's like turtling up like a spear wall everybody like put the shields up and the spears out like that then behind them i have my archers which obviously is right but each side of my archers i have a pitchfork farmer madman mcgiles farmer face and what he does he can reach two squares it's like hex based uh, when you're in the battle at the turn based and he can reach two two squares so i have him behind me front line so i've got my archers quite well defended and i've got a line of spears and what the spear wall does it's a it's it's a, a stance that you can take because each turn your guy will have certain powers that not powers skills that he can use one of them's a shield wall one's a, um, a spear wall it all depends on what he what gear he's got uh, and what you've chosen in, in perks so uh, what a spear wall does is if the enemy tries to breach the line by attacking they will get speared they'll keep getting speared until they attack successfully and make you miss at least i think that's what happens and it's an amazingly good defense it's an amazingly good defense until you come across zombies or these other things i can't remember what they're called necrozanimakiyaki because what happens is and this is what i love about this game the enemies are all totally diverse they're totally insanely different you have zombies and i was fighting the zombies and i was just about to win then all of a sudden they started coming back to life and i was like what the f and they were coming back to life behind my lines because i pushed forward to clear up and there were zombies all over the place and i was in a right mess you have these um they look they're just like a called a monster or something in, in the game that you that i had to clear out from like a graveyard and just as you think you're killing them they suddenly start eating the remains of the ones you've already dropped at least that looked what they were doing and then they were coming back even bigger and stronger and they were just raping us and then you obviously have your your standard brigands uh, your bounty hunters and some of them can be very well geared and you know you can run away you can just hit retreat and run like hell you'll take some injuries as well but it's better to run away and come back later on when you're better geared up and also as well at the end of each battle there will be the spoils of war if you win the battle you'll get everything that the enemy was carrying gold you'll get all that gear that that's left that's that's still not broken and you can you can make a good living just going around kicking the shit out of people uh in the in the contracts that you do so that's essentially what you do guys now it lasts a long long time i mean I'm, i've played this game now for 8.6 hours most of that's been in, across two sittings and i'm absolutely loving it it is well worth buying if you are into rpgs it doesn't matter if you're not into turn based because the rpg-ness of this is just so deep it's so well polished even when you have a battle you know and what i noticed if i had a battle with somebody and then i moved on to it to a town where i had the battle it's like got this mark on the map it's like you know bits of wood and all that and i, I moused over and it's like a battle was fought here i was like yes yes my men fought there we won we won then it's so good to just see them little things around the map i haven't scratched the surface of this game guys this is i mean what it's 22 pound you're gonna get way more than that's worth out of this game if you're into rpgs if you like the idea of playing mountain blade because this is the thing guys this is mountain blade without the real time without the actual combat that you that you would do in real time but it's pretty much Mountain Blade. You can see clearly it's been influenced by Mountain Blade. Now, there was a lot of people saying, in, well, a few people saying in the, in the forums that it was also like Lords of Midnight. It's not. It's not really, which is a bit of a disappointment because I kind of am still looking for a game similar to that. Uh, this isn't it. This is way, way closer to Mountain Blade without the actual combat. But the combat in this is still fun. Um, it's RNG a bit, but it's very tactical. And the RNG elements, yes, they are a annoyance at time. I mean, when you miss with a 75% chance to hit, it's so annoying, especially if that hit was a crucial one that cost you the death of somebody. And you do get attached to your men. I'm attached to a lot of my men, and when they die, it's like, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, all oh, like McFlanagan's died. No, leg. Like. You can save it any time you like, but 
once they're dead, they're dead. Unless you want to reload a save game, which you can do, I guess. But that kind of spoils the RPG ness. So there you go, guys. Battle Brothers, a turn-based tactical RPG. It is definitely worth a buy.